Hi everyone, welcome to the 3D Experience Forum here at Beautiful Caesars Palace. Today we're talking with David Ziegler, the Vice President of Aerospace and Defense with Dassault Systems. David, with years of, years of experience in aerospace, could you tell us how the 3D Experience platform is helping our customers to be able to achieve their design and their overall development goals? Well, you know, we, we embarked on that journey more than uh, 35 years ago with the, uh, the basic principles that we could help design the 3D parts and we moved on adding the space as a dimension through the product lifecycle management. And then we're helping them actually achieve what is the core challenge of the industry today from a major OEM standpoint, which is increasing their rates of production. How is Dassault Systems and the 3D Experience platform enabling the aerospace industry to adopt more of an experience economy mindset and overall direction and product strategy? When you're thinking about the, the way the aerospace industry is going, it's not only anymore about having a single great product or a single great service. It's about providing a passenger experience that is very differentiating. Mm -hmm. A couple of examples on that. Uh, if we're looking at how uh, Boom Supersonic is looking into redefining uh, the travel in supersonic mode, and they are clearly focusing early on from the design stage to provide their passengers with an unrivaled passenger experience. Mm -hmm. So we can see that even the major OEMs, but also all the startups are starting to understand that it is about the experience, about the mobility experience and not about the product anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to excel for customers and deliver exceptional experiences where all the product strategies culminate with that excellent uh, delivery of uh, experiences that are memorable and exceed their expectations. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's not only about providing a, a superior passenger experience, but it's also making you able as a customer to deliver on that experience. Making sure you've got operational excellence from design to manufacturing and to in-service operations on a single platform. Mm -hmm. Much has been said about additive manufacturing and its impact on uh, the aerospace value chain and the overall time to market. Um, can you elaborate on what your perspective is on additive manufacturing as it relates to aerospace today? It's a very exciting time actually for uh, 3D printing and I'm glad you're bringing that up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in aerospace and defense, there's already a lot of things that are performed today in 3D printing uh, and the major use case are for saving weight because basically that's a key economical factor in passenger transportation. But I think we're entering now in a stage where we're moving to mass productions of 3D printing parts, not only on brackets, but also on aluminum and other metallic parts. And this is very exciting. Yes, I think the metallurgical aspects of 3D printing are fascinating. Uh, and we have the capability on the 3D Experience platform to be able to accomplish that. What are you seeing with the customers you're visiting and with the prospects you're talking with, with regard to metallurgy and the overall direction of additive manufacturing from that dimension? Well, the, the way we're approaching that topic with our customers, we usually bring them to our innovation center in, uh, in Wichita, where they can actually experience hands-on the reality of 3D printing on mass production. Mm -hmm. And IR is great working on advanced materials and making sure they are standardized from a material perspective for the aerospace industry. So that's a great accelerator toward business. Mm. I, I think another uh, exciting accelerator is we're seeing so many startups rely on the 3D experience platform to move into aerospace manufacturing like Boom Supersonic. What are you seeing with regard to the startup community and that proliferation of new ideas uh, that the 3D Experience platform enables? So here, the big topic for startups is clearly the urban air mobility. It's, it's quite an exciting, very new domain for aviation. Uh, you know, we've been talking about flying cars for the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. It's about to come. When you, you think about our customers like Aeromobiles that are developing on the cloud, uh, a flying car, when you're thinking about other startups like uh, Aviation, like Joby Aviation, using our platform on the cloud to be in that market, I think that's going to be a, a tremendous few years ahead. It's probably great some time before we see that massively adopted, but mm -hmm. this is coming. What are your predictions about air transportation in the next 10 years? So if we're looking at global air traffic uh, within the next 10 years, I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that we're going to see continued growth at a rate of uh, 6 to 8 percent globally worldwide. These are the projections today. Um, but the next chapter again is urban air mobility and that growth today is more in the range of 10 
to 20%. There are more than 150 new electrical vertical takeoff and landing programs today. So we're going to see that coming live probably in the years 2023 for the first, uh, you know, kind of massive adoption, but on a regular scale and probably 2030 to actually get that having flying cars all over the place. So when you call an Uber, it's not going to pull up in front of your house. It'll just land in your driveway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it poses some challenges on, yeah. uh, on infrastructures, on AD ports, on uh, air traffic control as well. Sure. Uh, but all the technology is clearly in place. Mm -hmm. So now it's more a question of uh, adopting the right methods, the right tools and providing that to the market. Mm -hmm. I can imagine how much time you spend with those startups. And what are the most exciting aspects of how quickly they're moving to turn their prototypes into production units? So, you know, what's, what's really impressive with these guys is that uh, they are redefining the future without any boundaries. And they start with our products on day one on a Monday. By the end of the week, they are ready to go. And if they need to ramp up from 10 engineers to 500 engineers working on a single program over the course of six months, they are able to do that thanks to our, uh, thanks to our platform. Mm -hmm. And the speed at which they are working is just amazing. Yes, and the, the startups that you're working with, uh, do you see them being uh, more readily available uh, in terms of, or more readily focused on adopting cloud-based solutions for speed and time to market? Very clearly, that's the, uh, that's the trend the, uh, the market is going. Everybody's adopting the 3D experience on the cloud, to, to, especially for the startups, because that enables them to, to scale. Uh, but also the major OEMs are actually looking at that uh, and it's more complex for them because they've got a lot of legacy programs and it takes time for them to build that roadmap. But yeah, that's clearly the future of the industry, cloud-based aerospace and defense solutions. How are aerospace manufacturers dealing with their legacy systems and being able to integrate into a 3D experience for the cloud? How are they grappling with that or overcoming that challenge? So, so we've got basically three ways to help the OEMs transition from legacy systems to, to our platform. Uh, the first one, which is the more evident, is to start a new program directly into the 3D experience platform. And you can get started in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other approach interesting as well in terms of data migration. One of the examples is Dassault Aviation, mm -hmm. uh, which decided to actually migrate not only all their civil, but all their military programs directly into the 3D experience platform. Mm -hmm. And this is going to take more time, obviously, but at the end, you'll have a, a fully fledged and fully unified solution for all your programs. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful having uh, Dassault Aviation to be able to truth test and look at the uh, 3D experience for the cloud from that regard as well. You know, working with startups and, and being able to enable them to uh, innovate faster. What are you most excited about going uh, out five years? Because one year is pretty pretty short, you know, in the aviation development industry. But five years out, what's what is most exciting to you? So five years out, uh, I think not only we'll see the first developments of urban air mobility, uh, yeah. mass production, uh, which is going to be really exciting, you know, to, to fly in an autonomous vehicle from your home directly to your, uh, to your workplace, saving hours in terms of commute. But also there is space, uh, which is going to be really exciting in terms of new development. We call that the new space, yeah. and that's basically uh, the fact that the cost of a single launch or the access to space has been going dramatically down. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is, is a lot of startups in that space, not only focused on nano-satellites development, but also on the services that these satellites can provide. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine a future in a couple of years where the Earth is going to be constantly monitored 24-7. Uh, whether it's going to be weather sensors, logistic sensors for transportation, and so on and so forth, more GPS constellations, mm -hmm. which will enable a lot of different possibilities mm -hmm. in agriculture, in finance, insurance, all these new domains. Really. David, it's honor to speak with you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your insights. And thank you. And if you'd like additional information on Dassault Systems 3D Experience Platform, please go to our website. Make it a great day.